Dr. Heider. In this situation, you can probably call me Jean. You okay. know you can call me Ted. Yes, sir. No, I can't. Are you ready, sir? Does anyone ever say yes? Are you sure you're qualified to do this? No, but I'm the one doing it anyway. Well, that's not very really considerate towards you. Lord, it's so cold, even for this time of year. They're predicting a cold snap. I'm sure being in a hockey rink doesn't help matters. I'm sure we can turn the heat up and I can see my breath. We won't be here that long. You don't need to remove all your clothes, sir. You should probably wear a shirt under the vest. Probably, but there is a reception after the service. Um, I don't want to frighten people any more than some of them already are. It mm -hmm. might dig into your skin and cut you. It's only for a few hours. It'll be horribly uncomfortable, Father. It's either this or the possibility of dying in front of everyone I know. <laughs> I didn't know priests had such serious enemies. No, it's bishops that make the enemies. I didn't need this at my ordination. <laughs> Any oh, this is one of the newer models. More flexible, but it still takes some getting used to. But don't get used to where I made a notes I follow. I hope not. Any plans for Christmas? I still need to get to Advent. Advent? Uh, the four weeks between the Feast of St. Andrew and Christmas Eve, when we await the news of the birth of Christ. Traditionally, a time for reflection. I'm probably over-explaining. You're not. <laughs> it felt good to talk about something else for a little while and nice to be able to think about the reason why I'm doing this. Do you have any plans for Christmas, Aaron? No. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sure you are. I'll report back that you're ready, sir. Thank you. For your help, too. Bishop Griswold, I wasn't expecting... I wanted to have a word with you before the service began. You're not vested. It would only take a moment. Uh, but. We'll be starting in less than 20 minutes. We'll be lining up for the processional in. It won't take that long, I promise. I've been trying to get a hold of you for at least two weeks. I have been busy, Jean. As your assistants have been telling me, I've been trying to reach your supervisors for a couple of weeks. They've been busy. Too busy to answer my call? <coughs> Apparently. Are you sure your supervisor isn't coming? I only worked this meeting in so that I can finally talk to him face to face. I have meetings with the city offices later. Your associate pastors are handling your business from now on. But I have been able They've to. been briefed. But I have all the documents they need. Your assistant and secretary got everything from your office. You went into my office? How are you feeling? Ooh. I have to admit, when I was elected suffragan bishop of New Hampshire, I didn't imagine my consecration would involve being escorted by police to a hockey stadium. It was the only place we can fit all the people. Are there really 200 reporters coming? Last I heard. There are cameras outside and news vans outside already. Rumor is, the New York Times is coming. There are people outside claiming to be reporters. The congregation is refusing to come because those vultures are swarming our church. I didn't ask for any of this. They didn't come looking for me until he outed me. You never turned them down. Neither did you. You never made any effort to get rid of them. I thought if I ignored them, it would end. Instead, more just came. You should have come to the elders of the church, told us you were about to be exposed as a homosexual and a drug user. I never used drugs. You admitted to buying methamphetamine. I bought it, but I never used them. Why spend that much money? Why make yourself vulnerable if you weren't going to use them? It was part of the deal with with the person I was seeing. I felt like I didn't have a choice. I risked so much supporting you because I thought it was the right thing for the church. You definitely have no choice now. That's why I trusted you. The overseers asked me to speak with you. They feel it is in the best interest of the church if you give up the ministry and have no contact with anyone from the church. Then trust me on this. You need to postpone the consecration. And leave the state of Colorado for good. That is a very cruel <coughs> joke, Frank. I have been a pastor for 20 years. Churches began cutting off funding for the National Church three months ago. There are dioceses talking about succeeding completely from the National Church. I just received a phone call at the hotel that we've been cut off from the rest of the International Communion. Our church is in crisis. 
If we've learned anything from the past, disgraced pastors, their churches don't survive. I thought I could win in the end. I thought I had enough clout to get away with it. Do you really believe you could get away with it? This isn't a game, <coughs> Frank. This is my life, my career. Mm -hmm. Everything decided for me by you, by the Archbishop of Canterbury, by bishops in Nigeria and South Africa. You can't seriously think this is a game. You can't be serious, Eric. <laughs> this will destroy me. We're just trying to minimize the damage to the church. My church. Mr. Don't call me Mr. Haggard again. This is my church. I built it. I made it. I created it. And you're doing your best to destroy it. Do you remember Jimmy Swigert's church? What happened to him? That's who they're already comparing you to. The papers, the cable stations, the news. The late night shows are already mm -hmm. mocking you. Us. The church you created. This is my home. I agree with them. I think you should leave. This is where I raised my kids. This is where my granddaughter was born. I am not leaving Colorado or this church. Then the elders of the church will sue. There will be more investigations. Turn up even more. There isn't more. When these stories first came out, you told me they were lies. You expect me to believe you now? How much time do I have to think about it? They want me to give them an answer in an hour. I did the right thing. All the right things. I fought the urges and temptations God put in my soul. I did everything by the book. I was elected. I was approved by my peers. I endured lawsuits and accusations of sexual harassment to complete a process that is pro forma for straight bishops. You didn't resist very hard, did you? Now the men of the congregation are threatening to come forward, saying that you use them for sex. It's not true that you had sex with them or that you used them? I did everything God in the church called me to do. I did everything God called me to do. I married. I had a family. I founded a church. You spent thousands of dollars on prostitutes and met. The diocese of South Carolina has already declared they will succeed. They claim they will join the Bishop of Nigeria several other dioceses and individual churches across the country are poised to do the same. At least 100,000 people calling for a new Anglican province. And those are just the ones that want to stay Anglican. I never used the drugs. Why allow my election to go this far if you knew it will tear the church apart? Why let the pageant continue? It doesn't matter. I thought I could pull it off. After all I've risked. I bought them, but I never used them. All you've risked? Your children got death threats? Your partner needed a police escort to go to work? You're not wearing a bulletproof vest. Did you think about Gail or the kids in any of this? Mm -hmm. But I can back down, is that it? It can look like <coughs> I came to the opposition and you can retire blameless if misguided. The whole time. That's unfair. Do you really think after what you've done, after how you've humiliated this church and those who believed in you, that you could just retire quietly? Don't tell me about fair. I'll tell the elders you accept their offer. Eric, you're destroying this church that I built. I devoted my life to this church. We both have given our lives to this church. Leaving it will kill me. I can't watch the church that I'm responsible for cut itself to pieces and bleed to death. You keep saying how you care about Gail, how you feel sorry for Gail. Do this, make me sign this, and you'll hurt her. You'll take away her home. We'll be homeless, jobless if I sign this. I'll have risked my life for nothing. The people who elected me, who, who risked their careers backing me in the national convention, it, it will all be meaningless. And what will they have if you stay here? Constant reminders of what you did to them. Constantly talked about and punished because of their connection to you. Don't think of this as exile. Think of it as giving them a fresh start. You can't say no. What will you do to make me say yes? What power do you have over me? I deserve better than this, Aaron. I am your presiding bishop. You owe me your loyalty. Stop calling me that. What 
ever happened to Christian love and forgiveness? If your brother causes you to sin, cast him away. I thought all were equal in the eyes of Christ. My whole life, my whole ministry has been based on the idea, the, the firm belief we are all equal. God's love is not conditional. That's not what you built your church on. You built your church on the power of hellfire and the reek of brimstone. What real power do you have over me? Only an appeal to your conscience. Only the knowledge to know that you have the power to destroy this creation that you love so much. I believed it then. I preached forgiveness also. Not enough, apparently. Is it really that bad? Worse. There are stories of bishops locking people out of their churches. Feuds between international bishops erupting. <coughs> the Anglican Communion is going to rip itself apart because of us. I'll tell them you said yes. Postpone. Gene! Aaron! I can't let everything I risk, everything that Mark and the other people I love have risked be worthless. Let me be the one calling tail game. That sounds fair. And you'll stay with me when I call Gail? I can't. I have... Aaron, please. We can talk more afterwards. Maybe a little more relaxed. I can't. Why not? I will not sit down with the wicked! You... Jeremiah. Psalms 26. I'm pretty sure. It's irrelevant. You know this is wrong, Frank. In your conscience, you know this whole situation is wrong. My back's against a wall, Jean. It's Prejudice, plain and simple, backwards thinking. They say homosexuality is forbidden by the Bible. Consecration of practicing homosexuals is definitely forbidden by canon law. How many of them are divorced and remarried? Does that matter? According to the Bible, it does. <laughs> and I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except for fornication, and marry another, commits adultery. And he that marries her when she is put away, commits adultery. Romans, <laughs> Matthew, what we teach is the words from Jesus himself. <laughs> That's different. How? I remember a time when people who were divorced couldn't even receive communion, especially women who had divorced. I watched a priest turn a woman away from the communion rail without even the blessing out of Christian <laughs> morality and my ministry was formed in that moment. So tell me, now we accept people who have divorced and remarried. Where is the difference? Divorce is accepted now. Gays and power arms, that's the difference. We're changing that. Not today. I'll tell them you accept the offer. I'll be in touch with how long you have. Yes, today. I wish things were different, Mr. Haggard. I'm sure you don't believe me, but I do. I will go get vested then. We'll start a minute or two late. Hey guys, Rick Reichman of Rick Reichman Productions. I just want to say thank you for watching our show. This was filmed during an actual performance of the short play showcase that we did at the Long Beach Playhouse in March of 2020. Now as many of you know, theaters are struggling right now because they don't have audiences. Community theaters in particular are really hard hit by the COVID-19 because they rely on ticket sales to just stay open and they barely get by under normal operations. So I'd like to ask you to please, I'd like to encourage you to please donate to your local community theater. We'll put a link to the Long Beach Playhouse if you want to donate to there, or give to your favorite local community theater. All the performers that you just saw are community theater performers, like me. We love to perform, and without that venue, you're missing out on a lot of great theater. Now, if you like this video, please check out some of our other videos. And subscribe to our channel if you want to be notified when a new video pops up. And as always, be safe and be healthy.